start with our sky. And I like to um, always start, the phthalo blue is extremely strong. It's a very strong color. So you only need a little bit. I'm gonna add some white to that. And right away you can see this, we get this very, very pretty light turquoise blue color. And we're gonna just go for a very tropical sky. And usually before I start, I determine where my ocean's gonna start. So I'm imagining my ocean's gonna start not quite in the middle, a little bit more sky and not quite in the middle. So I wanna have room for some really pretty clouds. So we're gonna go ahead and start by just brushing this across the top. This color pretty. It already looks like a beautiful tropical sky. Now as I come down, I'm going to add just a tiny, tiny bit of this magenta color just to make it a little bit more of a purple color. So I'm going to go ahead and blend that in kind of an ombre look. You see the slight color difference there, just very slight. Now I'm going to add a little bit more to that color to give it this beautiful grape color to my sky. And I'm not really using that much paint. It really glides on nicely. So I'm going to stop right about here. I think that's a good place to stop for my sky. Just blend it all the way to the top until we get to the blue. Pretty? Okay, so I'm gonna rinse my brush out. And now I'm just going to dip my paintbrush in the white. And I'll go ahead and start at the top. And just sort of brush in just a very swishy motion. Just blend it all the way in. I'm gonna try to give it some softness here. Blend it right into the top part of my clouds. Just blend that in. Try to not do strokes that are straight like this. We're gonna try to, you know, give it some soft, swooshy motion. And wanna work, work, you wanna work on this while it's wet. That's what's really important. So I think I'm gonna to switch to a smaller paintbrush because that paintbrush is kind of big. And I'm gonna go ahead and continue dipping my paintbrush into the white And again, just play with this idea of just swishing it around. I'm barely touching the canvas too. I don't want to like press really hard. I'm just barely pressing. Just pick a few spots and just swirl it around. You're, um, because you're wet on wet, you're mixing this up. There's so um, many things that will happen that are pretty much out of your control. You can just keep playing and playing with it. And when you see, you know, I really like this, I like this look, then you stop. But I just, I just like to keep swishing it around. Get some white over here. Now this is a good place to stop 
And what we're going to do is we're going to let this dry really, really well um, because we can't put anything on top of it until it dries. And we need to do that. But the good news is, is acrylic paint dries very quickly, so it shouldn't take long for this to dry. We put a little bit more right here. There's no right or wrong way to make a cloud. Clouds just take on their own shape and sometimes they're actually kind of funny looking. So don't think that your clouds have to look a certain way. But I think this is a very a beautiful, puffy, cloudy day. So I think that's a good place to stop for right now and we're gonna let this dry. Okay, so now that I have my um, clouds dry, and usually this takes about maybe five minutes in the sun, or you can take a blow dryer and blow dry it gently. Don't put it on a high setting and, and hold a blow dryer, you know, kind of away from the canvas, not real close, because then it will just cook it, and you don't want to do that. So the next step is to, um, we're gonna draw our horizon line and we are gonna work on our clouds a little bit more, but for right now, we're gonna start with the ocean. And so what I like to do is just have some kind of a nice straight line to work with. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just draw with a pencil, just a straight line. And if you can't see that, and I can't really see this on this side, I'm gonna go ahead and draw it again. There we go. So I've got my horizon line with my ocean. And um, this is kind of the same thing as the sky. We are gonna blend colors into all the way down to the sand. So before I get started with that, I want to make my colors over here and have them ready on the side. So the sand will be this really pretty yellow ochre with some white. More yellow ochre in there. We're going to add some water to that so that it doesn't dry up while we're waiting. This is nice. It's a nice color. And the water is going to be two shades. It's going to be, this is, um, I know it doesn't look like it, but that's phthalo green. And I'll tell you how you can tell. We're just going to put a little swish here. See, it's a really pretty, uh, like a blue-green color, very pretty, and it's called phthalo green. So I'm gonna add some white to that. A little more green. There we go. We kinda want the ocean colors to change in from blue-blues to blue-greens. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of blue to that, the phthalo blue, just so it's not so green. There we go, that's a, that's a very pretty color. Add a little water to that. Nice, okay. Get rid of all this paint on my brush. Rinse that out. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and make our ocean blue color. And back to the phthalo blue, I'm just gonna throw it in there right where I did the sky because that pretty much dried anyway. And we're gonna add a little bit of white. And that's a much darker blue color and I'm gonna make another section over here with a lighter blue color not darker than the sky though so you can see there's two shades of blue here but it's still darker than the sky the sky color was over here okay I'm gonna add a little water to that all right so now what I'm gonna do is start with the, the top part of my horizon line up here on the top. So I'm gonna do that with the darker blue. And I might even add just a tiny bit more. Yeah, isn't that pretty? And this is where you have to be a little bit careful. You're gonna go across your line here and just try to go across. I try not to put too much, like if you go too slow, you can sometimes be a little on the jagged side. So I try to sweep it across. Don't worry about being perfect. It's a painting. Okay, so that looks pretty good. 
I can always straighten it out later. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and come across. Nice dark blue color. Right, and so as I come down, I want to graduate to this lighter blue. And let's go ahead and sweep it across to get that ombre look. Isn't that pretty? And now I'm going to graduate to the green blue color. And that would be right here. We're going to ombre that. Wow, that's beautiful. And so that I have some depth in my water, I'm going to go ahead and take some of this darker one and I'm just going to kind of run it across in a few places just because we don't want our water to just look flat, like there's no design at all. I'm going to rinse my brush out really, really good. I don't want any glue on my paintbrush. I usually have a dirty water that I rinse in first, and then I have a clean one that I rinse in second, just to make sure all the paint's off. Because that phthalo blue is very strong. It's like a dye, and it will stay on your paintbrush. So now I'm going to go ahead and start with my sand color. I'm going to start across the bottom. And as I get to the green, I really want to see those two run into each other. So I'm going to dip my paintbrush in a little bit of the green. And now back to ombre just kind of blend those in and you can only do this if your paint is wet so you can see how soft this is now there's no sharp line or anything and you can see where the colors blend into each other so we're going to stop there I might just add just a tiny bit of the yellow ochre and just give it a few little swishes here just so that it's not so plain there. Clean my brush really good. Let's do that again just so it's a little bit stronger. There we go. All right, so this is a good place to stop. We really, really need to let that dry super good um, before we can do any of the white in there. Um, right now, I think we would just be putting on way too much paint if we do that. So let's go ahead and go back to our clouds. You're going to have to be very careful not to put your hand on your ocean to touch that. But we're going to work on our clouds a little bit more. And the way sometimes I use a sponge, sometimes I use a brush, but for now I'll just use a brush. I'm going to dip it in the white. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and just start somewhere and put a little blob of paint like that. And then I'm going to take my finger and just sort of blend it in. Isn't that pretty? Just a little, Just we're just adding some more dimension to our clouds. Um, sometimes I like to keep these in the background like they're far away. I'm gonna put my, paint, my finger in just a little bit of water. It just makes it blend a little bit better. almost like finger painting. And we get clouds that are definitely more dimensional. Try not to put your paintbrush in, um, make sure that your paint is not super dry, that it's a little wet. So I always put a little water in my paint. 
and dip my finger in a little water and then start blending. And again, sometimes it just takes on its own um, shapes. Be very careful not to touch the water when you get low like this. You may even wanna wait to do this part of the clouds. We can always come back. So I'm gonna stop here because I really don't wanna touch the water. That would be bad. I'm smearing it into the clouds. So we'll just stop here. You can always come back. The clouds can always be done in so many different levels. So we'll stop there. We're gonna let this dry. It's super, super wet right now. And, um, and then we'll come back and do all the final touches. Okay, so we're gonna work on our waves and, and as you can see, I've turned my, um, I've turned my uh, canvas upside down for a lot of reasons is it's just easier for me to work with the waves crashing on my um, on my painting on my the the foam down here it's crashing down and so it's easier for me to work this way and rather than have my hand go like this I'm gonna just turn it like this and it'll make it a little bit easier so how I'm gonna start with that is I'm just going to dip my paintbrush in white Got still, I've still got quite a bit of white over here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just start with um, the very bottom of where the waves would be crashing. And I'm just gonna sort of glide it and then blend it with my finger. Make sure you wet your finger so that it blends right in. Go all the way across because it would be doing that. Blend, blend. So that it just sort of fades into the ocean. And so I'm just going to keep and let's see, let's do quite a bit here. Let's go ahead and keep going into the green. But now I'm just going to just kind of like the clouds. I'm just going to put different levels of the foam. Make sure your paint's uh, not dried up, that it's, you know, that you've got a good amount of water in there because the thinner and the more liquidy it is, the easier it is going to be to blend it. Let your finger do the painting on this one. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit here. In some places I want it to be really white, so I'll put dabs like this in here. Okay, I think that's good. At this point, I think I'm almost there. Let's just go ahead and brush it here. Just kind of mute that up. And this will be bigger waves that are coming across. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and turn it the other way because I need to see what I what this is looking like. Oh, okay. It's always kind of interesting when I turn it the other way how uh, how it changes. So I want to um, go ahead and now I'm going to go ahead and make this more into a um, a stronger wave, more the the close up wave. So I'm gonna go ahead and just give it kind of some wavy feeling like this. And again, I'm gonna just use my finger. Acrylic paint's funny. Sometimes you can't get that nice soft effect unless you use your finger. So I'm just gonna kind of, I'm kind of thinking a wave kind of splashes down like this. So that's what I'm trying to do is just give it a nice soft wave. That's a good one.
Okay, so now what I'm gonna work on are the smaller waves that are in the background because they just keep coming and they keep crashing and stuff. So, um, okay, back into the white. Make sure your white is watered down because we, we don't want that to be thick. I know I keep saying that, but sometimes you forget and then you get busy working on it and you, it, your paint's all dried up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put some smaller waves. I'll use my finger to just kind of blend it. These can be more, um, they don't have to be as uh, brushy as these right here. I'm gonna go ahead and add some. So uh, put as many as you want. Um, some days there's, you know, it's more choppy and there's a lot of waves and other t days it's, it's more calm. So I'm gonna just go ahead and try to see these dark parts. I try to put them on top of the dark parts. And as you get further away, they stop because the waves are not out there. That's ocean. So I'm gonna just basically put a few little spots here and I think that's good. So we've got the faraway waves and then we've got this closer one here. And again, waves are like, they're like clouds. They, there's no particular wave that looks exactly like um, another wave, so you're just, you're just gonna play with it. Stand back and look at it. If you feel like it needs to be thicker in a, a one of these places, then just add some more paint. And that's what I'm doing now. If I feel like it needs to be, you know, more white foam on there, I'm gonna add it. And even down here, where if I feel like I wanna add some more down here, I will. Just have to kind of Look at it and let your heart tell you what it needs and what it doesn't need and when to leave it alone. And I'm really liking this. I don't wanna keep playing with it. So what I may wanna do now, since it's nice and dry over here, is work on the clouds just for the last time. And uh, sometimes I like to go back and put some clouds up on the top. Um, that's up to you if you want to do that. And if you want to do that, again, work with the watered down paint. And I'll just do a few just so you can see. But I would just go ahead and maybe put some here and blend it in. You see? So... Simple, done. Don't play with it anymore. Okay, so um, maybe I want these to be whiter in color, so I will add some more paint to that. The more layers you put, the more depth you're gonna get. Um, I usually try to keep this uh, not so white because the, the clouds sort of like fade behind it. So this is about the point that I would stop and let that color just stay right where it is. But I'm really loving my super cloudy day. My these I love it when we have these beautiful billowy clouds. And I kind of just love the way it's coming out right now. I'm not sure. I feel like if I keep messing with it, I'm messing with it. <laughs> so, um, that's a good place to stop. I'm really liking this. So, um, sometimes I like to come across on the ocean and just put little sparkles, you know, just some little from where the sun is glistening. Mm 
and those would be done with just very carefully we just dot it in a few places but not a whole lot look at my wave here see if it needs any I really want this to be white right here where it's crashing I love how I got that curl I don't even know how that happened it just did all right I think that's good that's good I I'm thinking that this is probably done. What you can do if you want to embellish your painting is you can put seagulls and that's an easy thing to do. Um, I can show you really quickly. Um, I'm not going to do it on mine because I kind of just like it plain. Um, but if you did want to do a seagull, I'll just put this scrap paper down here and show you. What I would do is just probably stick it in the phthalo blue and the magenta to make a really dark color. Or if you have um, black and you want to make like a charcoal gray color, you can. And then, um, but I'm just going to show you here, but the way I make seagulls is I, I just come up like this and I think of a very wide M, like the letter M, and then I just put a little, his little body like that. So that's a good way if you want to add seagulls, but sometimes that kind of um, uh, takes away from how pretty the ocean is. And so I would, on this one, I'm just gonna leave it. I may even think about later putting a sailboat way, way, way off in the distance. But for now, I'm just gonna leave this. This is your easy ocean painting lesson. Um, this is the easiest way I know um, to get something that you will want to hang up on your wall and enjoy it um, and give it away as a gift and stuff. But it's, again, um, I've been painting for a long time, so some of this uh, might look like I make it look easy and then you go to do it and you find, oh, this is a lot harder than she made it look. But you know what? If you do enough of these paintings, well, there goes the train. <laughs> If you do enough of these paintings, you're gonna see painting number one and painting number 10, how they differ. So don't be hard on yourself on your first painting. Do it a few times and I guarantee you, you're gonna love what you see as you go along in your artistic journey. So that's all for now and I hope you enjoyed this simple ocean beach uh, lesson and uh, we'll, we'll meet again soon.